Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian, and today we are taking a look at some of my favorite whiskeys of last year that are not bourbons, ryes, or anything like that. We're looking at American single malts, wheat whiskeys, corn whiskeys, malt whiskeys, some of these categories that I see growing over the last couple of years. And let me preface right at the beginning. This is not all inclusive or anything like that. You know, this is something that at the beginning of last year when I was making my lists, I said, hey, this is a category I, I want to watch for. And so I've tried to do that, but it's not necessarily a category I've done a lot of seeking out or anything like that. So this is not going to be a top list necessarily like 10 down to one. These are just going to be some brands and bottles that I've really enjoyed this year that fall into this category. And I'm going to keep watching this year. My suggestion is maybe you should, too, if you're looking for something that's a little bit different, but still delicious. Let's go ahead and jump right into the first one. And this is the Hulling Station. Um, this is a straight wheat whiskey. Now, we have done a pick of that for Sealbox, some cash strength, a little bit older. But this one is 90 proof. And I feel like I see this on a lot of liquor store shelves. It's a bottle that I feel like kind of can easily go uh, overlooked. This is one of those bottles that I feel like it's kind of got an interesting earthiness to it. However, it also, to me, has like a funkiness or slight perfuminess that also tastes a little bit dusty. And so it's one that I often go to now. Admittedly, there are other people I've let try on this and they're like, oh, it's fine. So maybe I personally like this a little bit more than, than others do. The thing I think I like the most about it is, again, it's got some earthiness. It's got something that's very fresh to me. So a note that I like to use sometimes is like fresh grass or like it's very earthy in a really interesting way. In older pours, sometimes you notice that and you're like, hey, maybe the whiskey has gotten to the edge of the wood in the barrel where it's touching more outside environments than it is inside environments. So you're getting kind of mossy flavors or dirt kind of flavors or it's kind of weird. And you might be like, dude, why is this guy starting the video off like this? Click off. But this is a really interesting pour and definitely one that, again, if you like something that's a little different, you want an easy drinking pour. Again, this is 90 proof, very specific flavor, maybe a specific palate looking for it. But I've been really enjoying this one. That's a straight wheat whiskey polling station. That's from Old Dominic. Moving right along down the list is one I actually don't have a production bottle of, but this is the New Riff Sour Mash American Single Malt. Now, when we went to New Riff earlier in the year, we we noticed in the lab a lot of samples and stuff like that when we were doing our tour, and we uh, were able to pop in there and kind of ask some questions, and they were starting to do some trials for their single malt product. Now, we noticed a lot of barrels also aging in the warehouse when we were doing that. That's how we first started to key in on the fact that they were they're doing something like this, but they had a lot of different finishing. So the blend that they made for, for the product they ended up putting out is a blend of multiple types of finished single malts that they've worked on to kind of have one blended product that's enjoyable. And I will say some of the individual components that we tried at the distillery, I like a little bit more than this bottle here, but it's sort of drying. It's kind of got a smokiness to it for sure. Chocolate malt, as I usually expect when I'm drinking American single malts, but then kind of some vanilla and butterscotch come across the palate. And then the finish does saturate on the tongue, even though it's dry, it does get kind of weighted as if there's you know, uh, more of a, a finished American single malt aspect to it in the linger that you don't necessarily get as much on the front. So again, that is the new Riff American single malt. Sorry, I don't have the actual bottle here to show. Um, I would say it's probably not, the production bottle might not be my favorite of all the things that we're talking about here on the list, but I'm definitely interested to keep trying it. I'm glad to see someone who's like, you know, new Riff's been doing these interesting things uh, for quite some time with a lot of different varieties and, and different products. So I'm glad to see them pushing that way. I'd be curious to see if more legacy producers uh, are, are gonna start revealing some things like that as well. While we're on the single malt train, why don't we just kind of continue with some of these single malts. And we're gonna talk about uh, a release that came out towards the end of the year from Starlight. This is their American single malt. This is a 94 proof, it's seven years old. I don't even think that I knew that they were doing something like that uh, at Starlight, but this is a really enjoyable bottle. For being 94 proof, this drink's more like it's uh, above 100 proof, like 105 or something like that. Spumoni ice cream, really interesting note here. So pistachio, chocolate, kind of a cherry kind of flavors going on. Vermouth, oak, kind of toasted quality. Really interesting pour. There's a lot of things to explore here. I'd be curious to see if Starlight keeps doing single malts and what they kind of taste like. But it was cool to see their spin on this. Starlight, 
single malt American whiskey. I feel like we got to just kind of keep on going with the uh, American single malts here. Uh, and I feel like I can't talk about American single malts without talking about Westland. Westland has been doing American single malts for quite some time. Uh, and they're really, really interesting. And they're they're really, really robust for the most part. Some of them have super high proofs. Um, this one here, 102.8. So not that high, but still cask strength. Uh, this is an Abanules, uh finishing cask which is like a fortified dessert wine. This is a, a take or our bourbon pick that they did. One of my favorite barrels that I actually had, a friend of mine, Porkins, uh, sent me a sample of his Pinot de Chiram. Really, really enjoyable, but I love how thick and rich these are. These are seven years total maturation. This is a five malt barley. They go through and they, they give a whole lot of details about their specific bottle. So a lot of interesting transparency that goes on with those. This bottle specifically, a lot of leather. A lot of fruit, a lot of tannins, a lot of caramelized sugar notes, sticky all over the place. This is a great example just all around of like what I love about Westland American single malt bottles. Again, this is from somebody who is a novice. I'm not humongously versed on Westland specifically or all the different types of finishing that they do, but I'm learning to grow in the category and I figured here, maybe you all as well. Definitely a brand to watch out for and check out if you're interested in check out American single malts. We constantly, I feel like, have a rotation of a bunch of different single barrels available at Sealbox. I'm sure you see them in other places too. Out of Burlington, Washington, Westland Distillery. This was a wild one that we got in earlier in the year. They have a flagship product, pretty young, inexpensive, drinks really well, but this was a pick that we did from Sealbox. It is incredibly dark. This comes from Great Wagon Road Distilling out of North Carolina, seven and a half year American single malt brew up. The crazy thing about this bottle too, 148 proof. That is a, a, a burly pour right there. Some of these I don't even know how to, I think part of the reason why I don't tier this particular thing is because I don't even know how to rank some of these flavors compared to one another. This is, does not drink 148 proof at all. It is super rich coating, maple syrup, butterscotch, oaky, chocolate brownie, bomb gobs of flavor in this bottle tons of fruit kind of the more you chew on it and just gosh it's humongous hug there very rich again 148 proof i'm not surprised but this is one of those products again i didn't know much about it just a product that we ended up releasing but it's one again i want to either put on your radar or just say bottles like this i feel like i see them spring up all the time and so um, hopefully you all can look for products, bottles like that. This is a really interesting one. All right, we talked about Westland. Another one I feel like you see a lot of people talk about is Westward. They're out of Portland, Oregon. This one bought 125 proof. It was uh, about four years, eight months, so not quite five years old. The flavors that come from this, and this is a single barrel, so maybe this isn't all inclusive, so I'm sorry about that, but man, it's like strawberry yogurt, peach ring candy, finishing with coffee cake tons of flavor to explore. I feel like you maybe notice the malt of barley more on this one than others. That's not necessarily a negative thing, but it kind of has like a, a, a beer-like element to this one more so than the others, but packed with flavor. Definitely a brand I feel like just from the types of flavors I got out of this bottle, one that I want to keep watching for. It's definitely another brand to keep on your radar, Westward. We are going to finish this video off with a wheat whiskey, a corn whiskey, and a malt whiskey. Tried this at the very beginning of the year. I've been a fan of it all year long. This was uh, an incredible bottle. It's almost empty. This is the exceptional series from Rare Character. Uh, this one particularly came from Liquor Junction, Mass Bourbon Alliance. You've probably seen me talk about that on Instagram. I've probably done a video of it here, but enormous flavor. This is really interesting to start seeing these barrels release uh, from the exceptional series. And this one was 14 and a half years old. Huge, huge flavors here that goes toe to toe with some other really, really big hitting bourbons. Uh, if you really wanted to to go head to head with that. But this is a bottle too that we've seen more releases come out, different stores, different markets, different areas all over the place. Sealbox, we picked two. D picked a 10 year old barrel. I picked a 13 year old barrel. But these malt whiskeys are, are really, really intriguing in terms of their flavor profiles. Uh, if you can get your hands on one, I feel like I'm seeing more groups pop out with them. So I'm hoping that in, in some online distribution as well. So I'm hoping that if you're interested in kind of getting trying a, a malt whiskey, something that uh, again, just gives a little bit different interpretation of some of the flavors that we have in our bourbons, our rice, whatever. This is obviously malt forward percentage in the recipe. 
really interesting uh, flavors that are adjacent, similar to what you're going to find in bourbons and can go head to head with some really good bourbons, but is not. That's a malt whiskey. We're talking about the exceptional series from Rare Character. This specific bottle did not come out last year, but I feel like I got to bring it up. I was uh, going to talk about the Heaven Hill uh, 20 year, which uh, the the heritage collection that they did, their corn whiskey, uh, but I don't have a bottle of it here when I was recording. So I decided, you know what I can grab? The American corn whiskey from Dancing Goat. This was 100% American corn whiskey. This is a pick that we had done uh, with my old podcast with Drew P, uh, the Intro Proof Podcast. This thing is a banger. Humongous flavor. This pulls me in all types of directions. Huge oakiness, huge spice, tons of stuff going on. I will have it known, you know, just being a corn whiskey doesn't necessarily mean it's not a bourbon. I forget what's the case with Dancing Goat, but... You know, in order to be uh, considered a bourbon, even if it's 100% corn, 99% corn, whatever, has to go into new charred oak barrels. So in the case of Mellow Corn or the Heaven Hill Heritage Collection 20 year, those are corn whiskeys because they are not in new charred oak barrels. I actually forget what the case is with this one. So maybe this one actually could be called a bourbon and they still choose to call it a corn whiskey because it's corn whiskey. Don't actually know. Um, so jump down below, correct me uh, in the comments. Uh, if I'm saying something incorrectly, but doesn't matter. 100% corn whiskey, American corn whiskey, fantastic corn whiskey, something really enjoyable to try. And again, if you want to take a break from some bourbons and rice, explore some things, this is obviously long sold out. I've seen a couple others release. I'd love to see more release from this because this is also a really inexpensive bottle. Cash strength, this was seven years old. I know they've done an eight year old. I think maybe they're on the nine year old soon. Let's see if we can get one in from Sealbox, huh? Dancing Goat, can we get one in from Sealbox? Nine-year-old American corn whiskey, that'd be great. Uh, definitely something to check out. And then last on the list uh, does come from a heritage brand since we don't have the Heaven Hill 20 to talk about. We're gonna talk about this bottle that came in the select stock. This was from the Udo Bourbon Pick Experience. This was a 14-year-old wheat whiskey and it came in at 100 35.8 proof. So I got to go and and bottle this myself. I uh, tasted this bottle as well as a Larceny barrel proof, Elijah Craig barrel proof, Bernheim as well. This was crazy. You know, we've seen in the Parker's Heritage collection already, they did the Heavy Char wheat whiskey, 11 years old. So we know that they have wheat whiskeys like that. So again, can as opposed to a bourbon or rye, this means that it's more wheat forward in its recipe. And this thing is like, it's a huge fudge brownie, oaky, Brown sugar bomb. Lots of dark cherry underneath on the palate too. But this is actually one of the first pours. I feel like weeded bourbons, there are a lot of times that I feel like I'm told they should be softer, but they still come with a lot of spice to them. And this wheat whiskey is one that I notice for how high the proof is and how robust this pour is, I don't notice all these big attacking spices. And so you have a humongous pour that's like kind of in the stag level into like those older Elijah Craig barrel proof levels in terms of like it's bombarding rich flavor profile attacking you, but a little bit smoother. And I think that's one thing that I really, really appreciate about that. Again, a lot of dark notes with the, with the brownie and then just some sweetness comes in with the brown sugar, huge flavor incredibly enjoyable. I'm glad I get a chance to bottle that. I'd be curious to see if Heaven Hill does any more wheat whiskey releases. They might have done some younger ones. They've been doing a lot of really interesting things through the select stock program, rolling out through the You Do Bourbon experience. So I'd be curious to hear if you all tried any other ones uh, in, in other tastings that are just ones that I didn't end up going to, but this was a fantastic release as well. And that's a list. That's all a whole bunch of bottles that just are not bourbons and rise that I enjoyed in 2023, not tiered as we said, but my hope is that it gives you an idea of some other really, really great pours that came out this year that are not uh, the traditional pours that people generally chase after. And I'd love to hear from you all. Let me know some of your favorite American single malts, some of your favorite wheat whiskeys, corn whiskeys, malt whiskeys. If you all have had other brands, jump down below. Let me know. Again, like I said, I am no pro on this at all. I just find whiskeys that I really enjoy and I want to share them with you and hope that you all can enjoy them as well. Let me know what you want to hear me talk about in upcoming videos. I'd like to continue to bring content that you all are interested in hearing me talk about. So let me know down in the comments below. Thanks again, as always, for tuning into another video, guys. Hope it was insightful, informational. Until next time, we'll see you all later.